Welcome back, everyone. It's National White Cane Safety Day. It's a day to celebrate the achievements of people who are blind or visually impaired and the importance of important symbol of blindness and tool of independence, the white cane. And Ken Doctor joins us today. He's from the North Dakota Vision Services School for the Blind to explain a little bit more on the safety of those who have impaired or lost vision. Thank you so much for joining us today. And you were Thank showing you. me some cool apps even that yeah. you were using on your phone. But first, uh, what should people know when they see someone with a white cane? So the white cane is a great tool that just gives great independence for people who are vision impaired or blind. Um, it is usually white and red at the end of the t um, end of the cane. And it just signifies that someone might have uh, vision loss, um, not totally blind even, but just low vision, where glasses do not correct their vision to 20-20. And um, they might be out crossing the streets or out walking and taking the bus and also in the stores and they might need assistance. And at times you may want to ask that person if they want some assistance. Can you expand on that? What can people do to help? Um, to be helpful or, you know, not be, you know, intruding as well. Sure. Um, just the other day, um, I was talking to a lady and she was walking by some middle school students and she made a comment and they, the students followed her. And then, you know, she's like, oh, I was a little worried what they're going to do, but they just had no knowledge of what the white cane does. And the white cane is a tool to clear a path as they are walking down the sidewalk or walking in the street. If they bump into something, they know that there's something in their, in their way and just to move around that obstacle. Again, you know, if you walk into a store and say, can I get some assistance? And they're not using their white cane and they are just low vision. And people are like, oh, yeah, it's over that way. Well, which way is over that way if you can't see? Right. So that cane will tell that person, I have a vision loss. And can you help me find the items I need? So uh, expanding to like appropriate, not appropriate. Are there some right. things that you shouldn't do? Something you should never do. If you see somebody who is visually impaired or blind, you should never just grab them and start pulling them. You never should push them or steer them. You can ask, would you like some assistance? And they can either accept that or deny that. And then there's um, other techniques like sighted guide. So if I was visually impaired and you were going to guide me, I could just take your elbow and I'd be half a step behind you and we would walk down the street or walk down the store aisle and you could point things out to me. Now you brought in some things that can be used in the home to uh, help someone who is living with a Definitely. impairment. So one thing, you know, we all love to cook. And so I brought in a microwave and a lot of um, appliances nowadays have those touch screens. So I took fabric paint and I just, um, and this is bright orange fabric paint. So that contrast is there, but I would be able to push one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And I have an S down there and a C for start or a clear. And it is just much e easier to see that and operate that. Um, as I was talking with a woman the other day, she goes, I have to get my magnifier out there every time I want to use my microwave and I try and do this and I explain this and she's like, oh, that makes life so much easier. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Yes, that is ex great. Exactly. What else do you have here? Some different so, ideas. Um, just a large print talking timer. So it is, if I, it's four buttons, it's easier to use. One, two, minute, timer on. And then as it's running and we all want to know how much time is left, I'm able. Timer. So it'll tell me how much time is left as I'm baking those cookies. Um, I have some uh, magnifiers. So big box stores sell magnifiers. Um, at the North Dakota Vision Services School for the Blind, we have a non-for-profit store. Um, the big box stores, their magnifiers stop at about a 2.5. We start at a 2.5 and go up to about a 10x. Wow. So it's just that that much magnification really helps. And they all have good lights on them, so it's much easier. Um, again, back to cooking. It is tough at times to read. Is it a cup, half cup, third cup, or fourth cup? So again, I took that fabric paint and I put one tactual dot, that's high contrast for a cup, two for a half, three for a third, four for a fourth. And again, the tablespoons, you know, this is just imprinted in the metal. So one big dot is a tablespoon. So, and then... Yeah, you're like, I can even use my phone. Yep, so people are able to use your phone and I have an app on there for... Um, it's a note teller. I didn't have any money in my yeah. pocket, so. $1, so um, this will read paper currency. Coins, people always ask, how do you tell coins? Well, a dime and a quarter both have rough edges. And then there's a size difference. Pennies and nickels both have smooth edges. And with a penny and a nickel, there's a size difference and a color difference. So That's great. So many, uh, oh, one, yep. more, one last yep. thing we so can we talk have, about. Um, Cards here, large print cards, you know, games, people love to play games. So these are just large print cards. Um, you know, it doesn't have all the numbers. And then this deck has different colors on them. 
Um, again, it's large print. So, so many tools that you can use. Of, lots of tools out there for people with vision loss. And before you go, North Dakota Vision School for the Blind, where are you guys and, and can people contact you? Yes, so we have an office, our central location is in Grand Forks, North Dakota, where we have short-term programming where students will come for a week at a time. Next week we have eight students that are coming that are middle school students. And then we have um, adult weeks as well, where adults will come to us and learn about vision loss in different ways to do technology, mobility, um, daily living skills, braille, uh, adjustment to vision loss, and then we have those other weeks for students, high school weeks, uh, elementary weeks, and then we have an office in Fargo, Jamestown, Bismarck, and Minot. So we work with students and adults of all ages. We have people that work with infants all the way up to um, early, late 90s. Well, thank you so much yeah. for what you do, and thanks for coming in today. Thank you. All right, stay with us. Coming up next, we're binging on gratitude.